Good day, this is Jim Patel from Columbia Gorge Community College, Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is EET 121, Digital One. Today, our first lecture, we're gonna discuss digital and analog quantities. Okay, so analog. Analog is a cassette of continuous values. If we plot it over a course of time, basically it takes every value in between. Basically, there is no sudden jumps, whereas digital, it takes on a set of discrete values. Sampled at specific time intervals. It's the same stuff, but digital has a discrete set of values sampled. Okay, so basically what we're taking here, let's say for example, the example in the book is the temperature over a course of a day. You know, it, you're standing there out there outside and it does not suddenly jump from 60 degrees to 80 degrees instantaneously. It doesn't happen that way. Um, it's gonna go from 60 to 61 to 63, and yeah, it might be a rapid rise, but it takes those infinite ba values in between. Whereas a digital is basically samples of average temperature every 10 minutes. You basically converted an analog quantity in something that could be now digitized by representing each sampled value with a digital code, okay? The reason why we're doing this, there's a number of advantages. And here are the four main digital advantages. Number one, it's easier to process than analog data. Number two, we can transmit it more reliably. Number three, it's easier to store. And number four, which I think is kind of the bigger one, it can be reproduced with greater accuracy and clarity because noise does not affect digital data as much as analog. Okay, so what is noise? Noise is an unwanted voltage fluctu fluctuation. Okay, so uh, the example that I like to use is kind of akin to the ascent of man. You've all seen that graphic where a fish crawls out of the water and becomes a salamander, and the salamander becomes a lizard, and the lizard becomes a dinosaur, and the dinosaur becomes a mammal, and the mammal becomes an ape, uh, and then the ape becomes a primitive man, and then it finally becomes a man, and then we begin to regress where we're playing video games all the time, and we become, again, uh, sentient as rocks. So this is kind of the ascent of man in the digital realm. So way back when, if you wanted music, you had to carry a saxophone player with you or learn how to play the saxophone. Then made it a little bit easier. Those big compact disc looking things called records. And then we ascended yet again to a compact disc, which was a shiny thing. You know, think about that. You're going smaller, smaller, you know, it's more compact. And finally, we achieved the pinnacle of evolution, our iPod. Again, smaller. And all these things have been, they were analog signals like music, but they've converted into Digital, and this is kind of the transition here between digital. This was analog, and this is all digital. And notice the progression in how easy it is to carry this stuff. Okay, so the classic example of an analog electrical system in every single digital class, this is, you're gonna see this example in every single one, is basically a uh, PA system. Um, here we've got an individual speaking into a microphone. No, it's not an ugly looking ice cream cone. It's a microphone. And his sound waves are analog in nature. They're picked up by this microphone and it's converted to an analog electrical signal. And then they're fed into, I'm going to get rid of these numbers here because they do not match the numbers in your book. Uh, basically, it's the sound waves are converted to an analog electrical signal. And they're fed into a linear amp. 
amplifier, you know, making it bigger. And it does not change the time signature of the wave. All it does is just make it bigger. Let's just pretend that wave kind of looks like this wave right here. So now that we've amplified the signal, and again, it's still analog in nature, what are we going to do to that signal? Go ahead and put it into a speaker. And it converts it back to loud sound waves. Again, we're all analog the whole time. Analog voice. We've changed the, the microphone has changed it to an analog electrical signal. We take a linear amplifier, made it a louder analog signal, and we've converted the speaker has converted that analog signal in to an analog sound out. Okay? So now again, let's use stick into the whole music realm here. Let's talk about a digital and analog system. Okay, so here's my iPod inside here, and I do not have mini Kiss inside there. I have stored Kiss's records, however, in a digital form. And it takes the form of these digital pulses. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And what we do is basically because this digital data is easier to store. I'm storing up my tiny little iPod. No sense in carrying KISS with me every single day. As cool as that would be to hang out with KISS every single day. Um, I'm just going to store their, their music in a digital form. And then what I'm going to do is feed that digital data into a DAC. Digital to analog converter. Okay? So, digital to, to analog converter. Okay, all that does, it changes that digital data into an analog system, uh, excuse me, an analog signal. And now the rest of it is kind of the same from here on. And the advantage is I don't have to carry a singer with me. I've got this tiny digital data right here. So again, to refresh what went on there, we took our tiny analog signal, fed it into a linear amp, which has created a bigger signal, which is then fed to a speaker, and it has converted that to analog sound very loud analog sound, which is the only way you can listen to KISS. Okay, so that is the basic about digital and analog quantities. We're going to go ahead and discuss binary digits next.